for tonight all right you know what first I want to start off with the winners for the contest I did for UFC 190 I did a uh, t-shirt basically it was a t-shirt giveaway thing if Rhonda was to finish Betch in the first round we would give out six t-shirts Sace. so here's a list of people that won for liking and retweeting the tweet that I put out uh, Julia Reed Woke Marcus, Crystal Jackson, The Destructor, Jason UFC fan, Pain Dealer MMA, and Pennywise. That's seven. Huh. Well, guess what? I'm going to give out seven. What the hell? It was supposed to be six, but I wrote down seven people. I guess seven people were getting shirts. There you go. Someone got lucky right there. Awesome. Done with that. Okay, let's get into this past weekend. We had UFC 190 in Brazil. And um, this is what I got to say. Uh, no, it, it was the longest pay-per-view I have ever witnessed. Been through experience. I don't I don't know what. how do you want to put it. But it went really late. And I'm on the West Coast, so I feel for you folks on the East Coast or... England, that it's in the middle of the night, or wherever you may be. If you're over in Australia, it might have been easier for you. I don't know. But it ended around 10.30, 10.35 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Most pay-per-views in 9.20, maybe 9.30. I mean, they're slated to go to 10, but it's rare that a pay-per-view actually lasts till 10 p.m. So for it to last till 10.30, 10.35 it was about an hour beyond the norm hour you know what I'm saying so it was a little long but besides being a little long some of the fights were just I don't know I just you know I love the Noguera brothers I love them they've been around forever I mean they're seasoned vets to put it very lightly I mean they're pioneers of the sport big nog needs to hang up the gloves man seriously he's been taking way too much abuse I mean, he's taken abuse pretty much since day one back in the pride days. But and now that he's older, I mean, he's getting close to 40. So, and then obviously his brother, twin brother, the same age. Little Nog has not taken as much damage, but they have still both been in wars. And it's, it's sad. I don't want to see that. I don't want them to end up like Muhammad Ali or something. That's the person that comes to mind, you know, taking all that abuse. Obviously not exactly the same scenario, but, you know, you, you get my, my drift on that. You know, it's all about fighter safety, which we're going to touch on a little bit. And in, in, in a little bit later, we're going to touch about fighter safety. Um, but the Little Nog fight against Shogun, more of a competitive fight, a little more entertaining. But the Big Nog fight, it was... It was rough. It was hard to watch. And, you know, the thing that I, I felt personally that lacked a little bit of interest was the two fights for the ultimate finale. Not that they weren't good fights, because actually they were two of the better fights, I would say. But I never watched the Ultimate Fighter Brazil this past, uh, you know, on UFC Fight Pass. So I didn't have any connection, as I spoke about last week, right? That that connection you get because you watch these people every week, so you kind of build this, I don't know, fictitious bond, if you want to call it. I, I don't know. But you do, obviously, you get to know them more than just what you see in the cage fighting. You get to know their personality, or, or at least what they portray to you on the TV, whether it's fake or real. But since I didn't watch any of the Tough Brazil, I didn't know any of the fighters. Therefore, I didn't have any type of uh, connection with them or know anything about them or who they're about, what they're about, you know, what have you. So as far as entertainment, yeah, it was great. But when you have a fighter that you cheer for, a fighter that you know, a fighter that you have a connection with some way, shape, or form, it makes it more entertainment as a spectator. So that's what I have to say about 
that. Any case, main event, 34 seconds. That's how these people got the shirts that I gave out because it was the first round. Wow. Wow. I mean, Ronda Rousey is on a different level. I mean, she is literally just leagues above her peers, the people that are in her division. I feel bad. I think either A, you you go to Dana and you ask if either A, he can make a flyweight division or B, make a featherweight division and then go one of those two directions, you know what I'm saying? And get out of the bantamweight. I will say this, as much as I am not super excited to see the trilogy with her and Misha Tate, not that I have anything against Misha Tate, but we've seen this twice. Granted, Misha is the only one to take her into, the, into past the first round. I feel that Misha is probably the only one that has a legitimate shot at beating Ronda. Because A, she has gone the furthest with her. And B, now that she has fought her twice, maybe she can bring a different element to the table. Because she maybe knows what to expect. I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess. You know what to expect. That armbar. Although... The last three or four fights have been KOs or TKOs, other than uh, Kat Zingano. So I guess it doesn't matter if you have the experience. I just Ronda's crazy, man. Ronda is just this unreal athlete. That's what she is. She's just like this. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 a one in a million, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, she's great. She is great. I would personally like to see Misha and Kat Zingano fight again, and then one of those two get to fight uh, Ronda. I spoke about that last week. That's just my personal opinion, you know, but whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. I know they're going to start grooming Holly Holm, and then after that, you know, the Cyborg's always there in the background, but honestly, I don't think Cyborg has anything for her either. I mean, I know I'll hear a lot of flack for that, um, and I know Cyborg is a solid fighter, but I still believe as good as Cyborg is or isn't, Ronda is still beyond her, you know? And that's just my personal opinion. And you can like it or not. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, that was this past weekend, UFC 190. Also this past weekend, that was like simultaneous, simulcast, if you would, was the World Series of Fighting 22. Uh, overall, solid card. We had a couple title fights. Uh, Marlon Moraes defended his title. Kept it. He fought against another guy with the last name. I don't know if he pronounced it differently, but it's spelled the same way. But I think they were pronouncing it differently. But in any case, I want to talk about the main event. And that's going to segue into my rant this week. Last week, I was talking about cornermen. This week, I'm going to talk about fighter safety. So listen here. Basically, World Series Fighting 22 took place in Las Vegas. Title fight Jake Shields against Husamar Pajaras. And this, the, Husamar has been known to be a dirty fighter. He's been known. That's why he was released from the UFC, for holding submissions too long. This was no different. Now, the eye gouging thing, I'm going to go 50-50 with 50% at fault for Husamar, 50% at fault for Steve Mazzagatti. Steve Mazzagatti not doing a very good job. I mean, I know Shields stated that he got eye gouged about eight times. I don't know what the exact count was, but I can tell you that it was multiple times. All right? And we're not talking about, you can pick all these other fights, this guy did this, this guy. We're just talking about this fight right now, okay? All right, folks, stay with me here. Stay with me. There's going to be a quiz later. So that alone had one element to the fight, which as bad as it was, I wasn't as upset about that as the second element. The second element is holding the submission after the tap. There's the tap. The ref comes over. You know, you should let go when the guy taps, but in, in case you're uh, afraid of maybe the ref is not within view of seeing the tap, then maybe you wait till the ref pulls you up. And then, okay, I get that. But after the ref touches you or pulls you, he shouldn't have to yank you off, right? And Joe Lozon did a great job about doing analysis against some of his fights and some of Usamar's fights and kind of comparing them on how long each of their holds are in comparison. And it was like, uh, Husamars was like five times longer on average than Joe Lozon's. And I'm not saying that Joe Lozon is like this analytical genius, but I just thought it was very interesting to see how he took some of his own fights and compared them. And, and, and Joe Lozon, I don't think, has ever been 
um, you know, uh, titled as a cheater or a dirty fighter. But Husamar, I, I, I dislike him. I'm not saying that he's not a good fighter because his submissions are legit. I mean, as far as his leg submissions go, there's probably nobody better. Um, but when you're when you hold a submission for that long, you're not proving a point other than that you're a douchebag. That's what you're proving. That's the point that you're proving. And then, of course, after that, and then Jay tries to throw a punch at him. And, you know, I'm not condoning that either. I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing because I probably would have. I mean, that's he could have... Destroyed his, he could have destroyed his career. He could have blew out Jake's shoulder. Maybe it never gets repaired properly because the damage was so, so severe. Who knows? I mean, obviously, I don't think that's what happened. But the point is that once again, he is pulling these dirty antics. I'll take it a step further. I was on media row at World Series of Fighting when it was in uh, Sacramento back in December. I think that was 17, World Series of Fighting 17. And John Fitch fought Husamar for the title, and it was the same thing. I mean, and I interviewed John, and you can look on our on the, on the our YouTube channel and see we got the interview with him. And I felt bad, man. I didn't want to bug him. He's got his leg propped up. It's in a brace because his knee got all tweaked. And it's just, it just irritates the hell out of me that, that this happened. Now, I went on this rant. I saw it, and I lit it on fire. You know, I'm, I'm tagging... Ray Sipo, I'm tagging World Series of Fighting because I was pissed. And I'm not that kind of guy to really, you know, of course, I'm the jackass of MA, so I try to, you know, I do goofy stuff, I clown around, but it's all in fun. You know what I mean? I'm never really going after somebody's character or this and that. And this time I was upset. I was legitimately upset. So when I saw yesterday that they had stripped Husamar of his title and suspended him indefinitely, I was very very happy. I was. I couldn't have been happier at that moment. I think it was so justifiable. And you might disagree with me, and that's fine. I don't care. This is how I feel. It's the fighter safety first. You don't try to hold on to a submission and try to yank someone's arm off. So his manager comes in, and they do an interview with him. I don't know who exactly the interview, and they said, there's nothing in the rule book saying how hard you can crank a submission. Okay, I'll, I'll, I won't disagree with that, but... When someone taps, you let go. Or when the ref taps you to let go, you let go. All right? You can crank it if you want to be that guy. Okay, fine. Be that guy. But when someone taps, that's the time to let it go. All right? We're not we're not debating or I'm not debating whether or not he she didn't crank it that far because that's all subjective. But the debate here is Jake taps numerous times. He doesn't let go of the hold. Mazzagatti comes over. He's got to yank him off. It's BS, man. It's BS. And that's why the UFC got rid of him. And honestly, I hope he gets banned for life. Let him go back down to Brazil and fight in freaking a uh, fight club or something, whatever he wants to do. Hit up Ed Norton and Brad Pitt and yank on their arms and legs for a while. You know what I'm saying? That's my rant for this week. I wanted to talk about you know, fighter safety. So I do feel that Steve Mazzagatti, at least for the eye gouging, he should be held a little bit accountable for that. Whether or not Husamar would have got that submission because Jake Shields being impaired visually or in pain, so he's being mentally deterred or whatever you want to say, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But the whole end of the submission thing and just cranking it without letting go, it's just ridiculous. So... In any case, let's move on. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, we have UFC on Fox Sports 1. It is in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, they will have the typical early prelims on UFC Fight Pass, which, you know, I'm a big fight fan. If you don't have UFC Fight Pass, I understand. It's $10 a month. It's extra money. But like I've said before on previous seasons of the show, it wasn't really designed per se for our demographic. It was really to help out, not only get extra fights out there, and so fighters can to get on the, you know the card and, and make money because they have so many, you know, uh, contracted fighters. It's also to help get out to areas where they don't have the Fox television um, syndicated stations or pay per views or this. So maybe they have internet access and they can get. Uh, fight pass. I like it. It has the library, so you can watch a lot of old fights. They have WEC, Pride, Strike Force, obviously the UFC library. Now they're doing Invicta fights on there. They're doing Titan FC. 
Um, so it's cool, you know. You got you got a wide variety for ten dollars a month. I feel it's it's you know justifiable for me, anyways. It's Starbucks. You take out Starbucks twice in one month, and you've got UFC bypass. So in any case, early prelims on UFC Fight Pass, and then the regular prelims on Fox Sports Two, and the main card on Fox Sports One. There are some interesting matchups: uh, Derek Brunson against Sam Alvey, uh, Michael Johnson against uh, uh, Dariush. So I will say, as far as the card goes, I'm just going to break down the main event, and that is OSP, Open Say Peru, against Glover Teixeira. Um, OSP is legit. He is a good fighter. He has a couple decent wins under his belt. And I will say this, though. I don't think he has seen quite the talent that Teixeira has. Uh, Teixeira is on a two-fight losing streak, but... He went the distance with Jones, what not a lot of people can say that, to go the whole distance with Jones. And then he did get a loss to Phil Davis, um, but I feel that the level of competition that Teixeira has fought is a little bit greater than what OSP has fought. So I would definitely give the edge to Teixeira, and that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going with Teixeira this week. Uh, the rest of the fight card, I'm not going to really break down, but... Um, if I had to pick and choose over Michael Johnson and uh, Darius, though, I'd probably go with Michael Johnson. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, I want to keep it short and sweet this week. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Congratulations to all the winners on the T-shirts. And um, have a great night. Thanks a lot. Mighty out.